People argue the most passionately when they are convinced that they're right and they have the only right answer. This problem right here on the board behind me has caused a huge amount of controversy on the internet. People say it's one, people say it's nine, people say, some people say it's six, some people say it's zero. Before I tell you about how to do the problem, there's actually two things that come out of this that I think are huge issues. You see, again, if you're not familiar with me, my mission is to make math transparent. It's a big problem for people. It's in the way of success and I wanna help change that. So if you give me just a moment, I can uncover two things that might be making math difficult for you even if you're way past doing this kind of thing. Okay, so there's two issues here. Number one is that the way math is written is a convention, but it's really important because that's the intended meaning. Now, it's not so hard to understand how this is written. This symbol right here means divide. The parentheses mean to multiply, right? That means add. Yeah, no big deal. You've got four operations. There's lots of different ways to write them, but it does get confusing when you get into exponents and square roots and all that kind of stuff. So be careful. Make sure you really read the math for how it's written. Now, Mind Your Decisions made a video about this problem where he actually discusses how over time, the way we write math has changed. The meaning in the way math is written has changed. And that's just convention, that's all. Just like, you know, red light means stop and a green means go and a yellow means hurry, hurry, hurry. That's it, it's a convention. We all agree that these things mean these things. Like, that's the letter A. It's just a random arrangement of different lines, but to us it means something. It's a convention. It's a human invention and we all agree it means the same thing. So the way math is written is similar. Math might be real, might not be made up, but the way that we write it is. Now here's the bigger problem. When we're being taught math in elementary school, we first learn how to count, and then we learn how to add, which is like repeatedly counting, right? Like that, five plus three. After we learn how to add, we learn how to subtract. But the way it's taught is done in a way that we think those are different. But when we look at PEMDAS, we see addition and subtraction is separate. We think they're separate, but they're not, they're exactly the same thing. Addition and subtraction, same thing. Subtraction is addition of the opposite. Perhaps if we were taught negative numbers before we were taught subtraction, we wouldn't have this confusion. Wait a minute. You can change the order in which you add and it doesn't change the outcome. See? But it doesn't work for subtraction. See? This is actually a problem with the way we write math, that's all. You see, sometimes the way math is written lends itself to powerful manipulation, sometimes it doesn't. A classic example is actually with uh, the way we do square roots and cube roots and things. That is clunky and difficult to use. That is the same thing and it's a lot easier. This says there are four steps of repeated multiplication to get to two and we're looking for the first step. That's all it means. This means the same thing but it's difficult to understand. If you don't understand that, don't worry about it. The point is, sometimes we write math one way or another and it makes it easy. Let me show you with this addition subtraction thing. Subtraction is just addition of the opposite. That's what it is. And that is the same as this. They both equal two. See, PEMDAS should be PEMS or PEMDA. I don't know, whatever works better. There's actually more because, well, you know that multiplication is just repeated addition, right? There's one, two, three, four, fives there. You see, same thing. Similarly, multiplication and division, they're the same thing. Now you might be saying, wait, you can change the order with multiplication, get the same result, but with division, it doesn't work. And that's true. Those aren't the same. However, there's an issue. You see, the sign kind of goes with the number. The sign implies what we're doing. Division is multiplication of the reciprocal. Here, we are actually multiplying by one fifth. This is multiplying by one fifteenth. But those two things, they are the same, you see? But maybe we need a new acronym for the order of operations. Now the order of operations, the reason we multiply before we add is because, well, multiplication is repeated addition and addition is repeated counting. So anyway, that's why that works. But as far as multiplication and division go, they're the same. Now I'm going to put a link to uh, a video in the description that is an excellent job of expressing just that, that multiplication and division are interchangeable. You have to do whichever comes first from left to right and the same with addition. The guy does a great, I mean, he does a great job. Uh, it's kind of goofy, it's lighthearted, he's singing, it's got little kids in it, they're just having a good time. You should check it out. Anyway, order of operations. Maybe we need to change its name because these two things are the same and these two things are the same. <laughs> now, parentheses sometimes is brackets, so maybe beds 
is better. And if you're sleepy in math class, maybe this is your favorite one right here. Beds. So I would like to thank you for your time watching. Uh, I really hope it might help you see that multiplication and division are the same thing and that actually comes into play when you're reducing rational expressions and all kinds of stuff that you're gonna run into later in math. The order of operations is not wrong. It's just that addition and subtraction, you have to do them from left to right because they're really the same thing. And same with multiplication and division. You have to do them from left to right because they're also really the same thing. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, you could really help me out by clicking like and sharing it. Leave me a comment below. Please let me know what's working for you, what isn't working for you. And I'm on a mission. I really want to help people so that math is not an issue. I don't want it to be a point of confusion. I want math to change from being a hurdle that's in the way of young people's goals to a platform upon which they can well, reach their goals. Because if you can score high on math sections of SAT and ACT, you're gonna get some scholarships and all kinds of doors will open. And that doesn't mean you have to be a science major. You can definitely still pursue arts, but it just opens doors and that's what I wanna do. I wanna help people make math open doors for them. You could help me out. Just visit my Patreon site or my website. I'll leave the links in the description below. I'm always available on Twitter if you got questions or problems. Hit me up, twitter.com, the bearded math man. Anyway, as always, thank you again for watching and have a great day.